This is it, Robert. Wait here, will you? Right in, sir. Thank you. Are you the young doctor's father? Yes. Are you Mrs. Bailey? Oh, no, sir. Mrs. Bailey's dead. I see. I'm from next door. They're all in there. Go right in, sir. Thank you. Dad, will you see what you can do for him? I think the best thing you can do for the patient, Jerry, is to take the daughter out of the room. He's right, Sheila. Come out and try to get some rest. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Brownie. How are you feeling? Well, I think I feel a little better, Doctor. That's fine. Anything you'd like to have? Yes. But you wouldn't let me have it. You're your son wouldn't. Was that a smoke? Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think it'd hurt you. These young doctors get ideas, you know. Here, try this. You got plenty? Yes, yes, sure. I'll I'll have one with you. That's
You think there's any chance for him, Dad? I know I've done everything I could, but in the last minute, I, I got scared. Is he... is he dead? Oh. You must get used to these things, Jerry. Men die in spite of the best of doctors. Yeah, I know. I'm not very proud of it as a beginning. Hmm. You'd better come home with me, son, and get some rest. But I, I can't, Dad. I don't want to leave Sheila. She'll take it pretty hard. We're married, Dad. Married? I meant to tell you at first, but... Oh, you'll like her, Dad. Really, you will. I'm sure I will, Jay. Sheila. But why? Why isn't he in there with Van? Sheila, dear. He's dead. My father's dead. Oh, Jerry. Jerry. No, Robert. Uh, drive me to the Bradford. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Miss Jane's in the ceiling, sir. Oh, is Mrs. Bradford here? In the library, sir. Thank you, Martin. I'll find her. <laughs> Mary, dear, that's not fair. Oh, Don, did you see me? I'm afraid I did. But then one shouldn't creep up on a person, should one? How are you, my no. dear? No. Oh, I'm bored. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I'm glad you came in. Oh, dear. <laughs> Thanks. Did Jerry come with you? Mary? He's married. What? I don't understand. To whom? Oh, does it matter, my dear? No, I suppose it doesn't. Nothing matters to me except Jane. And this is going to... I know. How are we going to tell her, Mary? I don't know. Like mentioning the weather, I guess. 
I think she'd hate it any other way. How did it happen, Dan? Who is she? Bailey's daughter. Bailey? Oh, you know, my dear. The gardener. Damn. Oh, it's so easy to see how it happened. His first case. Sympathy. Pity. Oh, what a fool, Mary. What a crazy, chivalrous, blind young fool. A fool? Yes. But I fail to see where he's chivalrous. Mm. Donna Dan, I'm through with him. He's done nothing but hurt Jane ever since she was old enough to follow him around. Oh, I hate him, Dan. I hate him. Oh, Mary, dear. Mary. Come here. I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm almost as selfish as he is talking like this when you're hurt. But after all, Jane's my daughter. I know. I know, my dear. And I know exactly how you feel. Why, Dan, are you making love to Mother? You do it then. I'm a coward. What is it, Dan? Is it, is it Jerry? Has something happened to Jerry? Well, in in in, in a way, dear. Uh, in a way, uh, after fashion, uh, yes. Uh, you, you see, uh, well, my dear, the truth is the the young fool's got himself married. One would think you were relieved. Well, I, I am. For a moment after, after seeing your face, I, well, I, I had the idiotic notion that he might be dead. It's silly of me, wasn't it? Of course, I knew perfectly well that, that Jerry couldn't die, and yet, when I saw your face and, and Mother's, I, something went click. Like that, no. I thought, well, oh my goodness, something terrible has happened. You know how a person does, and well, I, I guess I, I don't know what I thought, but married, why? You're, you're talking quite a lot, Jane, darling. I was, wasn't I? That was to keep from asking the girl's name. Oh. You see, as long as I don't know that, it. Well, it's still a sort of a, a myth. I'm afraid it is, honey. In other words, Jerry has brought home another stray kit. Yeah. And we're all going to get fleas. Except Jerry. <laughs> but Jerry will be awfully sorry that we all get fleas. He will if we tell him. Which we won't. Because then Jerry would be so mortified over the kitten. And Jerry mustn't be mortified. No. I wonder why. I'm sure I don't know, darling. Except I'm afraid I've spoiled him. Jane, I could kill him for hurting you like this. Oh, and I could kill him for hurting you. Which makes us both. Elks. 
<laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> I kiss you? Why should I mind? Oh, I don't know. You're so elegant. Would you like some coffee? In bed? Sure, in bed. <laughs> Hello, Joseph. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm swell, Hank. Yeah. Say, listen, Joseph. You suppose you have some coffee down there that's good enough for Mrs. Gregory? Yeah. You have? Oh, swell. Send it up, will you? All right. Coffee coming right up, darling. <laughs> Jerry, what am I going to say to all those people? What people? These. The ones your father sent the announcements to. Will they come? Sure. Why not? I don't know, but... What will I say to them? I don't know a single one of them. Which is a break for you, if you only knew it. Tell the old dames you've heard so much about their operations that you feel that you know them. You don't mean that. <laughs> it's a swell idea. Listen, get Dad to give you a list of his operations. Then when you meet them, you can say, not the Mrs. Gallstone Smith. Oh, my dear, how you must have suffered. <laughs> oh, boy, would they love that. And would they love you? Jerry. Do you realize how silly you are? Sure. <laughs> Feels good. Well, it doesn't feel good to me. You don't even make love seriously. Huh? Well, you don't. Maybe I was wrong. You, you mean you, you want me to make love to you like they do in books? I mean, cheap books? No, of course not. I suppose that means that you think I'm cheap. Darling, I think you're grand. Oh, Sheila, don't hate me because I'm just a tongue-tied mug. Don't you know that if I loved you less, it would be easier for me to talk about it? No. But then I'll try to get used to it. What time do these people call? Oh, all around tea time. And uh, don't make the mistake of giving them tea. No. <laughs>
Set point, I think. Oh. <laughs> my game it. and my set. Have we time for another one? Oh, sure. You are getting too good for me. Oh, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you this time. Ready? No. What? Come on. What? Come on. Well, what are you going to do? Oh, any sap ought to know that. Come on. How do you do? Are you Mrs. Gregory? Yes. Oh, uh, is Jerry at home? No, he isn't. Is there something I could do for you? Oh, I'll say. That is, uh, I mean, uh, oh, my name's Symington, and uh, this is Alex Stockmar. How do you do? Uh, he's sick. Oh. What? I never felt better in my life. Oh, don't you believe a word of it? Why, just a minute ago, he had a very bad attack. Do you mind if I sit down? Why? Thanks. If you're sick, you'd better sit down, too. Thank you. Oh, he isn't that sick. It's just the life he leads. You know what I told you? I said, boy, you ought to cut out the women and the liquor. And you said, sin, you're right. They've got to me at last, didn't you? <laughs> Would you like a cigarette? Thanks. I didn't die by any chance, did I? <laughs> Almost, boy. That's why I rushed you to the doctor. <laughs> well, there's Jerry now. Would you like to take Mr. Stockmar to him? Well, how do you feel now, boy? Better? Oh, that's great. Well, thanks. I don't think we'll need the doctor now. <laughs> well, we'll see you soon. Bye. Say. Do you play tennis? No. Swell, I'll teach you. And listen. Well, I'll teach you to <clears throat> play tennis. That's a promise. Okay. <laughs> the thing for me to do now is to run up to New York for a few weeks. Why? Well, it'll save a lot of time and trouble. Look, say it takes two or three weeks to make her fall for me. Surely it won't take you that long. Well, it might. Anyway, in those three weeks, I work hard. She gets coy and what have you. Everybody's tired. But if I go away now while she's interested, what happens? She begins to wonder why I'm gone. And the more she wonders, the happier she'll be when I come back. And when I do show up, I've saved myself a lot of trouble and had a good time in the meantime. Simi, you are the most conceited young punk I have ever seen. Oh, yeah? Well, $500 says it works. You are crazy. All right, I'm crazy. Hello. 
Hello, Mother. Hello. Want some coffee? Yes, please. Have a nice ride? No. I met Dan. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'm going to call on Jerry's wife. Oh, no, you're not. And I'm not either, if that's what's up your sleeve. I wish you would. You know, Dan's a pretty nice person. He's a blind fool, just like you. And his daughter-in-law has already kicked over the traces. What do you mean? Just what I said. Everybody in town is talking about it. She's next to that young punk Symington's all the time. Playing tennis. And I bet Dan thinks it's quite all right. Well, why shouldn't he think it's all right? What a beastly thing to do. First, they all give her the cold shoulder. And then when she gets lonely and tries to have a little fun, they talk about her. If Simmy's been nice to her, I think it's darn decent of him. It's a cinch no one else has. Good evening, Joseph. Good evening, Mr. J. Oh, Joseph, tell Henry to leave my car out in front. I'm going out again. Yes, sir. Hello, Elegant. Are you going out again? Oh, darling, I, I, I have to. Well, ladies, ladies will have babies. Oh. Sheila. I have to work, darling. We can't live on Dad for the rest of our lives. Oh, it isn't that. Well... It's just that I can't stand this any longer, that's all. What, darling? This, staying here alone every day. It's been six weeks since we sent out those announcements. Not a soul's been near me. What's so wonderful about your friends that they won't have anything to do with me? Even your own father thinks I'm not good enough for you. Oh, Sheila, he... Well, isn't it he hasn't been nice to me? He has. But they all hate me. And why? They haven't even given me a chance. Thanks, Joseph. That's fine. I'll, I'll take care of it. Hello, I'm late. No, you're not there. Just in time. I'm not having one. I've got to go out again. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, how about my borrowing Sheila for the evening? Why, yes, I, I guess I can trust her with you for a few hours. Where are you taking her? Well, there's a dance at the club. I thought perhaps she might like to go. A dance? Well, of course, you understand you don't have to dance with me, my dear. Oh, but I'd love to dance with you. That's very nice of you. Will it be all right? Sure. I mean, will people think it's all right for me to be out without you? I'm sure the men would love it. They could have more dances, you see. And as for the women, well, well, if you, if you wear the clothes you have on now, they'd be so busy hating you, they wouldn't have time to think. What I have on now? 
But this is a sports dress. And besides, I don't want them to hate me. <laughs> you see, darling, uh, Dad's a little hazy on what the well-dressed woman should wear. Who said I was? Uh, <laughs> but he, he's trying to pay you a compliment. He means that uh, no woman is uh, really a success unless other women hate her. Really? Of course. Listen, darling, if women are nice to you, I'll have your face lifted. Oh, you're kidding, but I don't care. Come on, help me pick out a dress to wear. I want to dress up. <laughs> you're sweet. Oh. Come on, help me. Dad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How do you feel this Saturday night after your birthday? Thank you, Alex. Well, you know how one would feel. <laughs> how do you do? Hello. Tell me what to do. I'm scared. <laughs> they won't bite you. You want to leave this? Do I have to? I don't want to leave you. All right. Not unless you wish. Now, hold your nose and uh, duck. Okay. <laughs> Come along. Hello. Say, folks, there's Dr. Gregory with Jerry's wife. Why that old fool? Well, good evening, Dr. Gregory. I'm very sorry, sir, but uh, all the tables are taken. Oh, gracious. Uh, well, can't you put one in? Well, I'd like to, but it's against the club rules. Uh, perhaps you could join uh, one of the parties. Get a load of Jerry's wife. Well, I think she's very nice. I'll bet you do. <laughs> oh, dear. Sheila, my child, you're... you're out with an idiot. I should have reserved the table. Well, what do we do? I don't know. Pete, the doctor can't get a table. Ask him over to join us. Sure. You're not going to ask them to sit here. I've asked them. Well, then I won't stay. What's the matter with the doctor? Measles? No, daughter-in-law. She's... Uh... Cut it. Good evening, doctor. Oh, hello, Pete. Oh, may I present Mr. Sherman? Mrs. Gregory. How do you do, Mrs. Gregory? Won't you come over to our table and join us? Oh, no, uh... Thank you. Come on. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Hello, oh, Jane, dear. This is, uh... Jerry's wife, of course. I'm glad to know you. I'm Jane Bradford. This is Miss Abbott. Pete, you've just met, I suppose. Yes. And this is Alex Stockmark. He writes novels, Dan, <coughs> but they're not very good, so you needn't pretend you've read them. <laughs> How do you do, Doctor? Do you I do? write very good novels. I'm sure you do. I'm afraid Jane's taste isn't what it might be. <laughs> well, Mrs. Gregory, will you sit next to Alex? Thanks. And Dan, beside me? Thank you. Oh, 
Why don't you ask Mrs. Gregory to dance this for me? Yes, how about a little dance? <laughs> Would you like to dance with me? All right. You were looking pretty grim over there, old darling. I felt pretty grim. And, and your mother is going to have an acute attack of astigmatism unless she stops glaring. Jane, my darling, we're in for it. Is she coming? Like an avenging fate. Pretend you don't see her. I can't, honey. Oh, dear. Still making people swallow things they don't like. Aren't you, Dan, dear? And my charming daughter obliging by holding their noses. I wish you both luck. Oh. Anyway, it wasn't as bad as I expected. No, dear, but I'm afraid you're going to get yours later. <laughs> Jane, that was that was pretty sweet of you. Oh, now that's all right. Only don't expect me to make a habit of it. Hereafter, you reserve your table. Well, I'll, I'll try to remember. <laughs> You dance well. I love you. I want a tough one. No kidding. Where was that? The Egyptian ballroom. <laughs> well, you've ever been there. Oh, sure. I've been there lots of times. Really? I never did see you there. There's a cinch I've never seen you there. And Jerry would have had some competition. <laughs> Pete seems to be doing all right tonight. Pete's a fool, and so is Jane, for that matter. Why, she's been crazy about Jerry for years. And she's not fooling anybody, pretending that she likes her. I don't think Jean is trying to fool anybody. Discussing so earnestly. Bulbs? Gail, do you think you could find a place at another table? This one is rather crowded. Jane, dear, Jane. What? I said this is my table and it has suddenly become crowded. No, Jane, don't. Please, we'll go. No. No, Doctor, no. we'll go. If Gail hadn't sense enough to apologize, I do. I hope you forget about this. And by the way, tell Jerry if he doesn't invite me over for dinner soon, I'll give him a punch in the nose. And be sure to give him Jed's love. Honest, I think I'll kill him. I hope he doesn't change his mind. Let's get out of here and get a drink. <laughs> Splendid. Let's go to my place. It's near here. Okay, Jane? Do you want to? I suppose so. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Oh, Mr. Starkmark. Pardon me. The gentleman asked me to deliver this to you. He said there was no hurry. Thank you. Well, here we are. May I help you?
My boy has gone to bed. So I think I will have to fix the drinks. Who wants to help? Oh, of course. Well, I will. Oh, it's great. Uh, come along. And upon the heads of them as think they are smart descends the axe. <laughs> oh, I wish I were home. I'd like to smash something. I'll gladly give you my watch, darling. She won't worry about it, will she? I don't know, Jan. But you're not too. <laughs> you darling. Any attacks lately? Attacks? Oh, <laughs> that Simi has a fertile imagination, hasn't he? <laughs> How have you been? Oh, so-so. I didn't know you were a writer. Oh, I'm not so sure about it myself. Well, what'd that girl mean about Jerry and Jane? I don't know, but I don't think I would bother about it if I were you. Your husband hasn't shown any signs of disinterest, has he? <laughs> Anything but. Well, he's crazy about me. Hmm. Well, I don't wonder. <laughs> Do you think she's prettier than I am? No. Do you? Well... It wouldn't be nice for me to say, would it? Ha. You know, you are awfully young. And you would better hurry and get out of here before I kiss you. Hurry, hurry. While I feel noble. Excuse, please. Lady yeah. here, lose something. No catch him up name. Gregly. Gregly? Yes, please. Hello, it's you. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. I hope I haven't disturbed you, but I lost my cigarette case here last night. Uh, that is, um, I uh, lost it someplace, and I thought it might have been here. Dan. 
Have you found a cigarette case this morning? No, no find. Plenty of glasses, but no cigarette case. Well, I doubt the lady will be interested in the glasses. You may return to them. All finished. Good. Yes, please. Well, it's too bad. We can't help you. What did it look like? Uh, it was a silver one with my initials on it. Hmm. Why didn't you make it platinum? They are much nicer. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? I mean that you didn't really lose a cigarette case, did you? Why, of course I did. What makes you think I didn't? Because you are a, such a very bad liar. That's why. Oh, I think you're terrible. I hate you. Suppose you sit down here and tell me what it's all about. Are you angry with your husband or just plain bored? Or did you come over here to find out if I felt as noble as I felt last night? I think you're terrible. And I think you are adorable. Do you really? Of course. And you don't think I'm terrible for coming up here? I'm flattered. But I don't know what to do with you. Shall I spank you and send you home to your husband? Or shall I keep you here for a while? My husband isn't home. Oh, well, then that's settled. That. <laughs> what shall it be? Tea or a drink? Tea. You know, I'm going to love you. I don't mean today. Oh, then. When did you mean? When you want me to. Oh. That's in the nature of a souvenir. Mmm, it's beautiful. It's the first thing you've ever given me. Now, is that nice? What? Nothing. I merely said that I hope you wouldn't leave it in some other man's house. Hmm. I was a terrible liar, wasn't I? Terrible. But then I'm glad. Otherwise, I might have let you go. You won't ever do that, will you? What? Let me go. Where? Oh, don't tease. Please, I'm serious. I know you are. And very feminine. But then, how can I never let you go when every afternoon I let you go? You see how unreasonable you are? Here, give it to me. What for? To feel it, of course. Oh. I wouldn't go if you told me to stay. I think you better leave it here. Why can't we go away together? You mean a lot or just for a weekend? Oh, I hate you for that. I hate you. You hear me? I hate you. Did you call? Uh, the lady did, but she has changed her mind. Yes, please. Haven't you? What? Changed your mind. You don't really hate me, do you? No. I love you. Please don't be mean to me. Darling, I don't even want to be mean to you. Suppose you dry your eyes and tell me all about the surprise you have. Well, I can't tell it to you. You have to see it. Where? Mm, miles from here. What? Well, not really. It's only a couple. It's near the bridle path in the woods. You come with me and don't ask any questions. All right, but I have a hunch I should. <laughs> come on. Uh, uh, 
this is Mr. Stockmar, Mrs. Corley. We thought you might make us some tea. Yes, ma'am. What do you think of it? Isn't it a precious place? It may be. Very. What does it mean, Sheila? Who is this woman? Well, she's a woman who lived next door to me before I was married. She's awfully sweet when father died, nursing him and there all the time. So when you got worried about me coming to your house, I remembered her. And I remembered that she'd always wanted a place in the country. So I went to her and I told her that I hadn't forgotten how sweet she'd been to me. Now that I had some money, I had something for her. What's the matter? Nothing. Go on. Well, there isn't any more. I got this place for her and then gradually I... I let her know why I wanted it. Why are you looking at me like that? I honestly believe you wouldn't know if I told you. You amaze me. Oh, you don't like it. I've gone to all this trouble and I thought you'd like it. I thought we'd be happy here. Be like we belonged here. It was a charming thought. If we don't get killed. And I wish you would stop crying. All right. What price cigarette case? Jack. Oh, you're mean. <laughs> you have more than I have. I'm collecting them. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila, darling, I just got this note from Benson. Why didn't you tell me about it? I'd have given you the money. Oh, I, I didn't know. I thought maybe you wouldn't like it. She was so poor, and, and she's awfully sweet to me, and Father died. And some way it just didn't seem right for me to have all this without doing something for her. Darling, it was fine of you to share it with her, but you don't need to share so much interest with a money lender. Well, I'll go down there tomorrow and pay this note. You know, old Benson's a Shylock. Give me that. I feel in the mood to make you a present. Well, couldn't you give me a check and, and let me do it? Ah, uh, yes, if you prefer. It's your show. How much is it? It's... Oh, it's just... Well, now, what brought that on? Don't ask me. Let me have that. I'll give Sheila a check. But I'll drop in the old woman and see if she's in need of anything. What does Sheila do? She borrowed the money from Benson to buy the house and then forgot when the interest fell due. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless them. What would we do without them? You go up and dry the tears and I do uh, more commonplace matters. She's all right, isn't she, Dad? She is, Jerry. She's more than all right. I didn't want to do it, Doctor. And I should have known better. She never did an unselfish thing in all her life. But when she came to me and cried and said she'd never forget what I'd done for her, I thought maybe she changed. Changed? She's just the same as when she had old man Bailey working his fingers to the bone for her, thinking her so sweet and innocent. She's bad, Doctor. She's as bad as they make them. She played on your son's sympathies when he was trying to save her father. 
crying all over the place. She didn't care if that old man died. She treated him like he was dirt under her feet. She's made me do something I'll be sorry for as long as I live. But if it's the means of making your son come to his senses, it's done some good. I hope he kicks her out. Don't your son suspect anything? No. Then tell him, Doctor. I'll back you up. No. Are you going to protect her? No. Him. Doctor, I'm just an ignorant old woman, but you're a surgeon. Are you going to tell me that it isn't sometimes more merciful to operate and get it over? No. But even a surgeon cannot operate on his own son. You stay here. It isn't your fault. I couldn't. Please. This is your house. Drive around for a while. Yes, sir. Oh, good evening, Doctor. Here you are. Uh, tell Henry to pack me a bag. I'm going out of town. A very good, Doctor. Doctor, I paid off that note. What's the matter? Why are you looking at me like that? Get out. What? Get out. No, 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 no. I, 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 I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Sit down. Sit down. We've got to talk this over. Do you love Alex Tuckma? Yes. Does he love you? Yes, he does. How do you know he does? I, I just know that's all. probably think this is none of my business. Maybe you're right. I don't know whether you'll understand what I'm talking to you about. You'll possibly think it ridiculous. Maybe it is. But when one loves a person, it's the absurd things they do that endear them to you. When Jerry was quite young, he had the ridiculous habit of riding his bicycle with his eyes closed. He said it felt like flying. But it used to hurt both of us acutely when he would run into a tree. The odd part of it is he, he always ignored the tree episode and insisted that flying was splendid. After a while, I, I began to agree with him.
If you weren't so young, I could hate you. I wouldn't blame you if you did. You've been good to me. You're... You're not bad. You can't be. You're just... selfish. And that's what stops me. I'm selfish too. I want Jerry to have what he wants and continue to think it's splendid. And now I'm afraid. I'm afraid I've meddled. I have told Alex Stockmar to leave town. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, Sheila, wait! Wait, wait! Morningside, 5213. Hello? Alex, this is Sheila. Yes, please. No, please. Mr. Stockmar, go out. Well, listen, Pam, I've got to see him. No, please. Come back, Bombay. Oh, all right, Grace, darling. I'm glad you called. Yes, please. Miss Crawley, let me in. It's Sheila. Stockmar been here? Yes. He said he'd leave in a message? He left a note. But I don't think he meant for you to get it until tomorrow. Oh, what difference does that make? Give it to me. Where is it? It's in the desk. Gone, has he? He hasn't. Allie, you didn't mean this, did you? You're just trying to frighten me, weren't you? It's the last thing I want to do, Sheila, or hurt you, but I meant it. But you're going away. In a very few minutes, and Miss Bradford is driving me to the train. I don't think it would be wise for her to find you here, Sheila. Why is she coming here? What right is she to come here? Please don't go away. I can't live if you go away. Sheila. Oh, I know you don't believe me. I can't. Oh, please. Mm. No. You can't go. You can't. Well, I'll do anything if you won't leave me. I'll divorce him. Mm. I'll... Oh, stop it. Tell her to stop it. You're going. Go ahead and tell her to go away. Tell her to go away and, and then you take me with you. You take me with you, won't you? I won't bother you. I'll... Stop it. <gasps> Sheila. Please. Mr. Stockmar ready? Maybe. Please. That you, Jane? Yes. I'll be with you in a minute. All right. Sheila, why can't we let it end nicely? Because it isn't going to end. It can't. Alec, if you leave me, I'll, I'll kill myself. I will. I'll kill myself. Sheila. I won't stop it. Don't you understand what I'm telling you? 
I don't care about anything. Anything I'm through. Oh, Sheila, wait there. Oh, leave me alone. Stop her, Alex. She's crazy. Or let her go. Oh, she means it. She'll kill herself. She won't. Don't worry. Sheila! <laughs> Sheila! Sheila! What were you asking? If it was an accident, miss. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Here, dear, take this. Go ahead, miss. I don't know what kind of medicine the doctor's giving. Do you know any reason why it happened, miss? No. Unless my light's blinded her. She was coming from town. She reached the bridge first, and then, then suddenly, I saw the car swerve. Now, officer, <laughs> uh, can't we go on with this tomorrow? <laughs> Miss Bradford is unnerved. The shock of seeing it. I don't need any more, Doctor. It was a clear case of accident. And don't be feeling it was your fault, Miss Bradford. That's a nasty car up there. The other young lady was uh, your son's wife. Yeah. Too bad. If there's anything we can do. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Good evening, miss. Good evening, doctor. That was wonderful of you, Jane. Why? What do you mean? It was not an accident, dear. Oh, I, I didn't 
didn't know you knew. Jerry doesn't, does he? No. And he must never know. Ha, ha, ha.